come back on the next Wiggly Daily Wednesdays where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and pretty much anything else we come up with. As always, fair warning, we like to have a little bit of fun on the show. There may be humor. I know that terrifies some people. I'm Vin Stone. That is Jill Bryant. And over there, down there, you can't see him, but it makes more sense. Like if I go to the shot down there, he's the low man on the... um. What would you call that? Like the stack monitor pole? I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess traditionally <laughs> a totem, yeah, but... The, <laughs> the bottom totem. The mon- I want- <laughs> Listen, I really wanted to say the monitor pole, and I'm like, well, I guess accurately. <laughs> Low man on the totem. <laughs> yes, <laughs> on a technical term. Yes. That would I, be accurate. <laughs> technically correct. Sometimes the best type of correct. Hey, everyone watching us live on Twitch after the fact. Um, what's going on? We got a big week. A lot of fun stuff to talk about. I'm yeah. kind of <laughs> sitting back thinking what have i gotten myself into because uh i was reading around you know raspberry Pi four it's been on a while and when i say a while it's been out long enough to where there's a slim chance of getting one at a reasonable price which both of those are technically true but slim yes <laughs> well what i ended up having to do was uh just get a kit and i didn't get a can of kit i got another kit that was available roughly the same price but you know it had the added benefit of being what's the in stock yes that's it. <laughs> so, what are you talking about nothing is in stock <laughs> this is the truth I, I headed over to lady ada's house uh, and i'm like yo and they just laughed at me like nah we don't have any so I, I went to the amazon i didn't quite pay the iron price but hey i got out of it because what i want to build is uh mr jet seeks so <laughs> i think that's going to be interesting to set up a um, dedicated jitsi box on the raspberry pi for eight gig at least we're nice. going to try around play around with it and see what we come up with it'll be fun it'll make for a fun video regardless and also if you weren't around saturday night when we were doing double complete testing pedro was coming through over sonobas because i'm slowly working that into our audio chain so his i'm not gonna be able to tell it on live stream but mp3 podcast Definitely on YouTube, you'll be able to tell the difference because his audio is coming over uncompressed PCM 16 bit. It's hitting that and it's getting transferred to IP audio over NetJack into our DAW. So it's seamless, but I'm having to play around with some UDP stuff on the router and I don't know anything about networking. And uh, you yeah. keep saying that. <laughs> no one believes you at this point. <laughs> Listen. Okay. I was having a conversation with myself running through some stuff. I'm like, oh, oh my. That made sense to me. No. (laughs) And so it begins. So, no, it doesn't. We're we're good. We're good, man. It's like the rest in here, the rest of my house is the one port link sys router. I'm like, yay, I know how to use that. (sighs) Once, meal with you, Jelly Bean. (laughs) Well, while you're you're looking for Mr. (laughs) Jitseeks, look at me. (laughs) Nerd. (laughs) <laughs> I had to say that. It just came out. Me seeks. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I've still been working on my computer studio. And I've actually are, have already filled lots of uh, plastic bins and have been getting everything out of here so I can paint, you know, new flooring and uh, new shelving and cabinets for my vintage computers and to make it a nicer podcasting studio. And, of course, displays for my penguins. (laughs) Right on. Things are going to... People will complain if those are not in shot. Yeah. 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 (laughs) How's the piano this week? Oh, it's it's in its position, correct position. So now I can uh, build some storage racks uh, to put all these plastic bins that are going out of the room onto. (laughs) So we got a running bed. We absolutely have a running bed on how long the uh, piano is going to remain in the middle of the living room. Oh, yes. <laughs> Pedro, you, I, I didn't know that uh, this week's episode is uh, brought to us by Fractal Computing. No, no, no. It's uh, this episode of uh, Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays is not brought to you by the Fractal Design Mesh of IC. That just happened to come in shortly before <laughs> I sat down to, uh, you know, do this so it's there uh, that i will be transferring the contents of this box into that i saw that i saw that pop I up in our discord case this morning <laughs> it's like he better not 
<laughs> I didn't. I, I, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm proud of you. <laughs> I don't do that. Uh, the days that I have to stream, the days that I have to, you know, L- L- Linux Weekly, Layla Wednesdays, mm-hmm. um, Linux Gamecast Weekly, those days are completely booked for, you don't touch that at all. <laughs> but everyone, I'm sure everyone listening knows what I'm talking about. That situation of when the thing shows up, but you can't really use the computer or thing X, Y, or Z. And like, oh, this, this is going to be rough. I hope this doesn't show up. <laughs> Before that, I hope it comes in after that. I've run into that a lot. So yeah. you have to you have to sit there and adult very hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's back there. That way I can't see. Well, I can sort of see it on the return video, but it's back there. See, I've done you a favor by putting it in hipster mode. <laughs> yeah, yes. I can't really tell. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let's get right into it after that because uh, the Linux desktop is boring and it's rubbish. Nobody likes it anymore and doesn't do any cool <laughs> flips. The windows don't wobble. The cubes don't rotate. And uh, I'm just like, oh man. Yeah. So this is another great article by Jack Wallen, who uh, who uh, writes and contemplates. Like Ven was saying, that the Linux desktop is boring again, but that is actually a really good thing. Because, yes, once upon a time, the Linux de- desktop had to be flashy to draw people's attention in all uh, the beautiful after step and the desktop spinning 3D cube on GNOME and wiggly windows. <laughs> Everyone remember that? Well, that was back in the time when, you know, Linux hadn't progressed quite as much. So we had to do something flashy to draw people in. So now the Linux desktop is boring, a la GNOME and the like in XFCE, but that is a good thing because they work and have matured. Yes, the Linux desktop has matured. And uh, he, he just makes, uh, Jack makes a lot of great points um, in the article and uh, talks about how there's the the GNOME camp and then the KDE camp, which is like window, Windows interaction, the Windows operating system. And uh, how there's uh, all the other OSs kind of fit in one or two, you know, areas, either the GNOME or the KDE uh, look and feel. And, uh, you know, I like actually he was talking about uh, how beautiful, you know, the, the classic desktop is and how he likes to go back to that world. And I, that's one of the reasons I back up all my configs and customizations from Window Maker and Flexbox, which I'm using right now, the X Window Managers. And it's so, you know, I can keep that that pretty desktop and it won't be boring. <laughs> I gotta take but a look it at works this. and it's functional. <laughs> so let, let's talk about what's considered boring in 2021. Not <laughs> exciting. Gnome, boring. All right. Okay. Uh, cinnamon. Yawn. Yawn. <laughs> I wanted to call it mad just to piss off both camps, but I'm not. Um, <laughs> C Cinnamon, KDE, C Windows Seven, Pantheon, Pantheon, C Pantheon, Pantheon, Pantheon. 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 Uh, Budgie, C Cinnamon, Deep and Desktop. Sadly enough, C KDE. Do you see the pattern here? Outside of outliers like Enlightenment, uh, we have pretty much two Linux to GNOME and Windows Seven very. Um, get wrecked, XFC baby. Uh, this is how you do it, man. All right. I'm just going to be, I've said this before. I'm going to say it again, just in case you weren't paying attention. It's probably smart of you not to. Now, if you spend more time, uh, mm-hmm. like working, being productive, doing stuff versus like poking around in your desktop environment, you'll find out lo and behold, shock among shocks that your productivity might increase. Just going to throw mm-hmm. that out there. Free pro tip. Now, someone should tell this lad about XFCE because if you want boring, it has it in spades. I mean. <laughs> No, it really doesn't. It does, <laughs> because GNOME when I XFCE. finish this sentence, it'll make sense. <laughs> well, XFCE is is actually equivalent to CD, CDC, after all. You mean CDE. C- yes, yeah, CDE. Yes, the Center for Disease Control. Yes, yeah. Yeah. it totally is. <laughs> Sorry. So that's what it's you're going to deal with. CD. Jill has just compared XFCE to a disease, which I personally don't feel because I'm running XFCE on everything. <laughs> It gets the job done. It's not flashy. It's not crazy. Now, if you want some hipster, like old school modification stuff, did you want to play? Go install Enlightenment. Uh, Edit some XML Mm -hmm. files. Have fun. But I got to (laughs) get stuff done. I don't 
Pedro, yeah. you have KDE, so you clearly like to tinker to some extent. Also, you like to have things crash. I don't like the crashing, but I do like the... If you want a window manager that actually manages your windows and exposes all of that management to you, which will inevitably lead you to do something that will cause things to crash, that's <laughs> unfortunate. But that is the case, and that's why terrible as Kwin may be as a compositor, because my goodness, that is thus far the worst. Even Mutter in Gnome <laughs> is better than uh, Kwin, but... Kwin actually lets you set up how you want a window to appear. Do you want it to always show up in the same square. screen in the exact I like same them to square? Be square. <laughs> you can set positions, you can set sizes, you can set uh, whether or not they're decorated, whether or not they're full screen. You can set everything. And you can set up rules so whenever that window spawns, it comes back up. KDE, yes, it's uh, even more comprehensive than uh, Windows 7 when it comes to window management. And mm -hmm. I, I, I still disagree with you that uh, XFCE is boring because XFCE gives you way too many customization options that your typical GNOME user <laughs> probably would be a little too scared of. It's um, which I guess uh, does bring me back to the article. Clearly, um, <laughs> we do need people like Jack Wallen because variety is the spice of life after all. Mm -hmm. And it takes a specific kind of person to specific to willingly use GNOME. And, you know, within that niche, there's a sub niche of people who not only tolerate, but appreciate just how much control you don't have in GNOME. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay. really going to go out on not much of a limb and say a lot of people using GNOME just like, hey, man, I, I just need to get my web, web browser done. Which it will do. Like I, every other I, window I, manager and desktop environment out there, <laughs> it will do that. You yeah. know, with me, I just need to get to my applications and you know, I, I'm starting up like stuff in here. What do I need? I, I got to have the dot nuts running on a different machine, but, you know, a couple of browsers, OBS, stuff like that, audio stuff. Um, that's it. The less I have to look at my um, desktop manager, the better. You know, I'm, I'm not fiddling with that. But some people really yeah. like to play around with it, which is fine. I don't know. Here's here's an unpopular opinion. I mean, Windows 95, the start menu, that I that wasn't a bad idea. It Clearly. works. <laughs> it works. And yeah. it seems like for the last, <laughs> geez, has it not it's quite been 30 years, but. Um, People have been trying to improve on that and not very successfully. I mean, it goes back to CDE, which, you know, I, I got a little mm -hmm. launcher down there. I got my programs. Boom, I'm done. You know, you're talking to a person that get very, very cross when XFC implemented desktop icons. It's like, what is this? This is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I like the, well, when it comes to your typical desktop environments, I like the way that Windows 7 did it. Mm -hmm. You have a panel at the bottom that acts uh, as not just the taskbar, so you can switch in between windows, but as a dock that you can pin applications that you typically run. You pin them, and they're always there. They're always visible, and... It doesn't duplicate it. You just click on it and it opens the application and the icon becomes the switcher for the window. Mm -hmm. I like that particular paradigm. I know that's a, <laughs> a bit of a um, <laughs> naughty word to say in mm -hmm. certain circles, but the, it is very much a paradigm in how the desktop works. Just like uh, GNOME and Unity very much fit into one and... Fluxbox mm -hmm. and your open boxes and your i3s. Well, i3 is tiling window manager, slightly different, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's just like each to their own, but I, exactly. I, I'm fine with boring. I run Debian. It's yeah. a good type of boring. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's the beauty of Linux. We have lots of choice in desktops. No, and Jill, yes, you're wrong. You know, <laughs> I, 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 like, I like, you know, I'm using Window Maker right now because I don't like uh, necessarily always using the look of KDE or the look of GNOME. I like something unique and different. But as long as it works this for you, that's, wars. Yeah, uh, that's the beauty, you know, is you have hundreds of different choices on desktop. Hey, sometimes I even run the awesome desktop when doing the show. So 
<laughs> Don't play games, otherwise Achilles doesn't like you anymore. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so let's just keep going. Let's talk about a default choice that I don't necessarily have a problem with, but I'm sure you'll find one, Pedro. I don't think anyone has a problem with the choice. It's how they're implementing it. No. Specifically, uh, Ubuntu or Canonical are moving to Flutter. It's uh, Google's open source cross-platform UI framework thing. And, well, it, Flutter has become fairly popular uh, in the past couple of years. And right now... Canonical has decided we're going to make that the default and we're uh, everything that we release, be it uh, for Ubuntu mobile or desktop, it's going to be built on Flutter. Great. That's amazing. And then there's this quote uh, from um, Ken... Ken, Ken Van Dyne from uh, Canonical, which reads, we, Canonical, not only enabled Flutter for Linux, uh, we also worked with the Flutter team to publish the Flutter SDK as a snap on the <laughs> Snap Store, yes. the App Store for Linux. <laughs> oh, God, just stop. Come just on. Here goes Pedro. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that was, I, I was reading the top part of that article. It's like, yes, that's a good thing. Great new framework, build new things, amazing snaps. Oh, just stop trying to make oh, that just a thing. <laughs> now, the one thing I'll say about Flutter is it's pretty much the only reason Dart still exists. But hey, whatever. Uh, this this is primarily going to be used for stuff that you can't really get grumpy about anyway, because it's only for installers and stuff like that, which is fine. And you know what? Even if it's moving over to desktop and stuff like that, still a better love story than Electron. Yeah. Definitely. And that's why they chose Flutter, you know, because it has better customization with the desktop and icons and all the things. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I can't get upset at that, but it, it's a snap page. He's a let it go snap sort of thing now. <laughs> <laughs> they really shouldn't be. No, because, they are Pedro. Check let's your be home honest. Folder. <laughs> oh, I know for a fact that they're not on this system because that particular uh, Snap Store URL has been blacklisted. Hey, man, just do an LS. <laughs> no, that would be 100 percent fair. I like flatback containerization on the desktop. Yet has to make has made sense to me. Like, when it does, I'm down with it. But you know, I had to set up flatpak. Because Steam released Steam Link last week, and we had to test it out for the show, like Steamcast Weekly. And I uninstalled it and uninstalled Flatback. I'm like, I, I don't mm -hmm. get this. But then again, I got to go yell at clouds after the show. So it could just be that. <laughs> <laughs> I have Flatpaks running. I've had Athenium, uh, which is game client style like Steam, but for stuff packaged with Flatpaks. Mm -hmm. And it's great. For just yeah, getting your packs. games and being able to play them without having to worry about, oh, uh, this game hasn't been developed since 2010. Mm -hmm. It's in a flat pack. It's going to run. <laughs> you better hope it does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because favorite, then, then something's yeah. fundamentally wrong. <laughs> Aw. I love flat packs too. And I do have snaps installed on one of my other uh, machines I use for testing software. And, uh, Yes, other. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I like the touch. <laughs> Not this one. Others. But my preferred is app images. I like app images. <laughs> Those are the best. Yes. And the <laughs> so let's talk about a new laptop that you probably won't be able to buy because it's got yep. NVIDIA inside. Oh, <laughs> It's got an NVIDIA 30 series. <laughs> so this is the Kubuntu Focus M2 laptop, and it is actually the first Linux-powered lap laptop to offer the NVIDIA RTX 30 series GPUs, all uh, the 2060s, the 2070s, or the 2080s. And the base model with the Core i7 CPU, the GeForce RTX 360 GPU, 16 gigs of memory and 250 gig SSD is now nicely priced at $1,795. Yeah, that sounds expensive, but it is the latest and greatest in, um, NVIDIA GPU. So I can't complain there. And it actually has um, three port three ports for three external monitors. It's got a uh, display port, Thunderbolt, and HDMI ports. And a lot of app laptops don't have all three of those. 
So. <laughs> Type C <laughs> everything nowadays. I was really yeah. happy to see on this is 144 hertz display. You know, that's mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. I'd like to see more than that, 100%. And allegedly, you could, you know, with the Thunderbolt connectivity and everything else, you can have up to four of them. I'd like to also mm-hmm. see that just out of curiosity. You know, like, <laughs> poke it with 144 a stick. hertz. <laughs> Now, yeah, the base price, that's not bad at all. Yeah. The um, YOLO spec is $4,500. That, that's mm-hmm. the one that you brag about. And it'll be outdated in a year, but you get to brag about it for like 10, 15 minutes before it's going to be obsolete. Painter, does this excite you? <laughs> Admittedly, the Intel CPU and the base price, even like the entry level configuration that only has a 2060 only, um, and the um, it's it's got the same um, Core i7 10 10875H. God damn it, Intel. Mm. Uh, the uh, <laughs> really? the yeah the the base configuration with eight gigs of RAM and a twenty sixty and a two hundred and fifty gig SSD is fourteen hundred dollars. That's not a very good value proposition. For fourteen hundred dollars, I'd expect sixteen gigs of RAM and a five hundred gig SSD minimum. That configuration, as you're currently presenting it, nine ninety nine at most, and mm-hmm. but. We do live in the era of scalpers, so... I don't think we're quite at the point of people scalping Linux laptops. (laughs) It has a 30 series (laughs) in it. (laughs) It's not a far... uh, You know, it's not very far-fetched at all. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to go out on a limb and just say that they're probably the ones nomming up your $900 laptops. Uh, to, To a point, yes, but it has a... 30 series graphics card. Well, several. Don't series. worry. 3060, 3070, 3080. You know, I, I have to go back and edit his uh, little cussy fit. And so I'm going to make him agree with me in post. <laughs> I look forward to the yes. check. Is this and it was yes. particularly cussy. It was a GD. <laughs> so we need to talk about Debian, the superior operating system using, well, Rust. Debian running mm-hmm. on Rust core utilities now this is kind of interesting because it's really a good opportunity not to just uh, re-implement new core utils but actually kind of like rethink them go back play around with some things now this is significantly larger than the c version because rust uh packages are going to clock in about 73 megabytes when c 17 megs but then again no size optimizations have been done yet and there's plenty of ways to do it in rust Maybe, like right now, this is more of a curiosity. And yes, it's what the kids are doing. Let's just rust all the things. But hey, the more I play with Rust, the more I like it. And I thought this was a cool mm. thing. I just wanted to give a little shout out. Hey, maybe you want to go play with it. Hmm? Yeah. So I thought the developer, uh, Silvestri, was this was really cool because he was looking for a project to learn Rust during the various COVID doc- lockdowns. And he definitely found a great one. I mean, this is really, really amazing. Um, you know, he wants to get f- uh, Firefox implemented in Rust and the core utilities. And, and he has several goals that he wanted to achieve and he's doing it. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, no, uh, th- th- Jill's uh, pronunciation of the developer's name has now has me confused because I looked at that. It's like, oh, like the cat, Sylvester. Oh, <laughs> Sylvester, it is. <laughs> so, <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> so that was uh, wrecking around in my brain, but okay. Uh, now, uh, honestly, anything that improves on the base GNU core utils that we've been using. For how long now? Uh, it's uh, two that's weeks. Good. That's very good. Mm -hmm. (laughs) because i've been hearing of uh, debian gnu slash linux for a long long time for example and i love it though i love it pedro mateus because you can be like hey man talk about linux and like don't you mean gnu linux like thank you for letting me know not to talk to you next yes (laughs) that's usually a very good indicator (laughs) right cool we're not gonna be friends yeah and being able to drop that gnu slash or gnu plus prefix that uh, dropping that requirement's very nice, mm. specifically to annoy those people. 
So. How dare you hate on those people, Pedro? <laughs> <laughs> uh, even the copy pasta uh, people doing it ironically this, this nowadays. Pose law is starting to cut you in. You get that big fractal money. <laughs> you just. I had to buy that. <laughs> Not only did I have to buy it, even secondhand, it was stupidly expensive too. I was so. going to say that mm-hmm. it's practically raining fractals, but I think you might be able to take one, possibly two, then you're down for the count. Yeah, yeah, that sting. <laughs> but uh, Torvalds made a little bit of an oopsie doodle. Yes. Mm. Speaking of Linux proper, as in the kernel, well, uh, <laughs> the five twelve RC one was released earlier in the week, uh, or was it last week? One of the two. And uh, Linus, at the very, like, very shortly after it was released, said, um, please don't use it. And he changed the name of the um, V5.12RC1 to V5.12RC1 don't use. Because it has issues. Specifically, it was dumping the RAM contents that would normally be sent to swap. Uh, but it wasn't sending them to swap it was sending them directly mm-hmm. onto sectors of your hard drive or your ssd you know full system uh full file system corruption levels of crazy yeah apparently it has issues with swap files uh which is kind of a problem nowadays because a lot of distros well not a lot but ubuntu and i think fedora and there's a couple others that are using swap files by default now not swap mm-hmm. partitions if you have a swap partition probably play with that you'll be fine swap files this will start eating away at your file system literally <laughs> so do, do you think it's like work life maybe Linus should take like maybe cut back on making so many tech tip videos and these types of <laughs> <laughs> he could, he absolutely should, but then again, he lives in Texas, and uh, power was out for three days, so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> my reaction was this, was, <laughs> I had to say this, swappy no worky? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, as, as, as an old uh, Linux user, I de- default to setting up a swap partition for every distro I install. I don't, I don't care what distro it is, it's, it's just my habit i feel safer that way and i i you know your system actually runs a little faster because of it (laughs) yes swap partitions are effectively faster there's lower latency than having to address a specific file in the already existing file system but then there's the whole basic thing of the linux kernel expects a swap partition so does the file system yeah yes yes (laughs) um i i know people uh i think we all know at least one person that I used to not live that swap lifestyle. Mm-hmm. You know, found out the hard way we were playing a multiplayer dirt Motorbike. bike game one day. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like legend material LGC. <laughs> was it the olden times? <laughs> of being on the call and we're recording that and Jordan just disappears. And fortunately, I was just thinking, like, what's going on? Oh, let's get top of. Oh, no. And this thing, I did him like seven gigs of RAM due to a memory leak. Which is a good idea. Mm-hmm. Um, well, here's something I noticed. Mm-hmm. In, um, for those of you playing around with that Debian. Yay, another Debian plug for me. I know a shock. Debian 10 would take however much memory you had and just out of the box give you that size swap partition. Mm-hmm. Wasn't a fan of that, especially when I wasn't mm-hmm. paying attention and set up the Threadripper because it's got 32 gigajoules of RAM. And that's on an NVMe that I like that space and I'm not messing with it. <laughs> 11 just does like a gig oh that was nice mm. the the new busters if you download the up to date ISO also defaults to a gig yeah <laughs> make sure yeah, you get the one with the firmware Pedro <laughs> no i got to relive the the olden times you know actually setting up a laptop from scratch well with a internet connection going in and just downloading everything from the repo oh yeah. no no that's what we need to do we need to set up one where you have to have a usb three and a quarter drive that's the only way it'll accept uh drivers i mean how many discs do you think it would take to get an nvidia driver on 100 uh let's see for the standard high density ones like 144 megabytes yeah divide 300 
Mm, nope. uh, some odd megabytes by oh, 144. <laughs> as You're many floppy disks as 260 uh, <laughs> floppies <Yeah>. ish. <laughs> so, um, and to using um, Mr. Alerts as a, yeah, like that was a rule. Well, yeah. a rule back in the day. I have twice as mm-hmm. much. But then again, we were talking about, yes, I better have a 16 megabyte partition. Mm hmm. For my yeah. eight like, I have one of gig of RAM. Let's have two gigs of swap. Yeah. Sure. Times have changed. So, yes. <laughs> GL Image Reader is a GTK QT front end to Tesseract. OCR. I know that sounds so salacious, doesn't it? Check it out. It's kind of <laughs> cool, man. I just wanted to give it a mention because, you know, just being the front end for Tesseract. I'm like, okay, that's cool, because, you know, the open source OCR engine. Now, this was originally developed uh, at HP, not the front end, but Tesseract uh, and, like, open source in, like, 2006. But as long as you get the language packs installed, you could do some cool stuff with this. And I really like this front end, especially with, like, scanning in books and stuff like that. Just being able to snapshot it, throw it in, and get to work. So you can do import PDF documents, manual automatic recognition, uh, recognition, Arena definition, uh, HOCR documents, and it's available for everything. Arch, yep. Susie, Ubuntu, mm-hmm. Yay. Debian, official repos, it's right there. <laughs> Source, Fedora, and there's a Windows thing. There is, uh, which yeah. is very useful for those people who want uh, to get text out of PDFs without too much hassle, without having to pay Adobe. What do you mean? Mm-hmm. I just that's highlight a thing. And, and copy and paste. <laughs> Yeah, and speaking uh, of not what, all PDFs yeah. let you do that. <laughs> when I get done with them again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking of what Pedro was just saying, you know, remember the days when OCR software used to be very expensive and clunky, and uh, yeah. now we have so many great open source options that work well. I, I remember paying a lot of money to get OCR for my scanner back in the day, my HP scanner, and sometimes it would come with it, and sometimes it didn't. <laughs> So that was a thing. So, and we've actually talked about um, uh, other OCR software on Linux, and one was Screen Translator. We talked about that last October, and that's a a really nice one as well. But G Image Reader is actually is a lot easier to use and has a nicer GUI. Mm. That's for sure. Fun times. I easy to build too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I don't want to take. When was the last time? The closest thing to OCR I've probably used in the last decade was the uh, Google Goggles Translate thing. Yeah. And it's called Lens work. nowadays. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that, was, that was a very fascinating, um, unintentionally comedic dumpster fire of an application. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, now you can do it just under G Photos as well. It's, no, I'm you know, built get, in. I'm going to get an extension yeah. cord and I'm bring my flatbed around with me and stick it on this. <laughs> There you go, Ben. <laughs> get a backpack. It'd be awesome. <laughs> Portable. <laughs> Let me just. <laughs> okay. <laughs> get one of those old hand scanners, man. We try to like get an image in like three passes. It'll always be a little crooked. Those uh-huh. work surprisingly well nowadays. There's uh, one of the teams at work that has uh, one of them, and we had to explain to them how that worked, and we didn't know how it worked. So okay, let's test. Zzz. Holy, that works really well. Very nice. <laughs> oh, no, sweetheart. These were over parallel ports, so they had a speed meter on them. So if you went too fast, I mean, it, it would go into like the red. You had to slow down for the data. Yeah. I was fortunate and always had SCSI scan- scanners because I uh, teach animation and graphics. So I had legal, and I still have it, my legal sized SCSI scanner, and it still works beautifully. It still works great. <laughs> It's one of the cool things about living in 2021 is like even your cheapest mobile. Now you're like, click. Done. Yeah, <laughs> it's convenient. And there's an app that'll flip the thing upright and trim out the edges. Like, yeah. oh, there you go. That, that, it's effectively a scatter. Oh, you know, okay. even being involved in technology, you know, for my entire life, it's like depositing a check of like just hovering it over. So like, oh, I got it. I'm like, All right. <laughs> Little, little little taste of the future is pretty decent. So we got a slice by before we get into that. We want to thank all the lovely people who make this show possible. Patreon.com forward slash letting scheme cast. They're hanging out in our discord. 
doing their wacky shenanigans and that's how we do everything here we don't have ads we're not trying to hit you with like hey here's a mattress or a here's my portable <laughs> scanner go buy it <laughs> but your support helps us pay for delivering this you know we got the bandwidth cost server hosting and everything else that we do we want to thank you for it stick around your name is going to be in the credits you can end up on this wall back here if you get anything mm -hmm. for our little studio to play with and um you know, we, we try to sweeten it up a little bit and throw some things. Mm -hmm. Like right now, if you're curious about a $2,000 mic preamp that you probably don't want to get for $200, there's a video currently up on Patreon <laughs> if you want to take a look at that. It's, <laughs> it's about nine minutes of me showing the world how to make audiophile grade Cat5 cables work. <laughs> 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 I, I was extremely serious when I was making this video and I was like, I'm just going to irritate some people. So I, I kind of went into it. And plus there's a uh, interesting size comparison in there as well, that you might enjoy. Not a banana for scale, something different, actually two, <laughs> two different things for scale. And uh, yeah, thanks everyone for making that, uh, hanging out on discord. We got an extra show we do for patrons each and every week, pretty, pretty super chosen. You get a custom RSS feed. You don't have to worry about logins or anything like that. Put it in your podcatcher. Or if you want to really access the shows like this, like hop in Discord, go to the announcements. This one will be out, you know, a little bit before it goes public, but that's just why I'm waiting on YouTube to do its thing. But on Saturdays, it's usually a couple of, hour, a couple of hours early. And um, our live and uncut series, if you like this, this is just the gooey, icky middle pre-show, <laughs> post-show. That's all together in podcast format and video. <laughs> for our patron patrons oh mm -hmm. man i need the english harder man so, <laughs> it's a, you need the cdc then dude i was talking <laughs> keep going i was not going to say anything i was just now it's too late <laughs> <laughs> so thanks each and every one of you for that but let's get into a slice of pie it's not pie day but hey that looks i don't know that looks difficult to make that's exactly what that looks like <laughs> yes <laughs> tell me how to kill insects with lasers <laughs> i'm not entirely sure i have um the adultness uh, to be responsible in owning one of these, but I want one. I absolutely do. <laughs> because uh, Ildar here decided, you know what would be a good idea? Let's get a couple of cameras, set them up in stereo, as well as the Raspberry Pi camera, along with a high-powered laser, and all the necessary... That looks um, almost as portable as my scanner solution, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> just get get them all together uh with some sketchy looking breadboards and just see if we could make this work and he put a video of uh the raspberry pi testing at a surprisingly accurate and fast speed you can see the little laser dot uh, is not very far behind of where the little led that he's using as the mosquito yeah that's that's impressive, but like I said, I, I, I would end up blinding myself or Nori or uh, setting fire to one of Nori's drawings that she has on the <laughs> wall because a mosquito <laughs> happened to land there. Yeah, it. Um, as much as I want one, I, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it's a neat, neat idea. Now, my problem would be Amazing. hooking up a voice and to it just so it'd be screeching exterminate the entire time then i wouldn't care <laughs> <laughs> you know as long as i can configure it to you know switch it from mosquito to anything that moves mm -hmm. and just put a little plunger yeah i'd, I'd, I'd have to get like a little model plunger and stick on the side of mm -hmm. it it'd, it'd be brilliant i'd love it <laughs> it would replace my doomba that was unserious ceremonious things like stomp to death because i forgot to mention to him some person over my house at the time though <laughs> so <laughs> contact maybe you want to make a um doomba or a darlek raspberry pie mosquito killer and tell us about it how can they do that pedro well there are many ways you can tell us about it you can uh go to your local post office grab yourself an envelope and a stamp and then have write you had to do paper. that recently 
uh, no. <laughs> I just print the labels off the internet <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> drop them off in the uh, collection box at work because uh, Royal Mail thankfully just goes and picks up and as long as the label's good... Let's take be one hundred percent honest. Fringe benefit of having to go into an office printer. Yep, printer, and not having uh-huh. to go into the postal uh, office to say <laughs> return the keyboard that was uh, clicky when it shouldn't have been. Technically, but- it had red switches. <laughs> <laughs> yes they were dyed red yes <laughs> that's it <laughs> but yeah the best way to get in touch with us is to uh use your blue switches on your uh cherry mx mechanical keyboard and uh tapping on over to linuxgamecast.com hitting the contact button with the mouse which too can have uh, mechanical switches if you're that crazy and uh leave us a message just make sure you pick lwdw on the topic and would it will be featured right here on the feedback mm-hmm. unless we can find the answer um by doing a google search on the first page that yeah (laughs) come on man come no here here's what i want you to do everyone i I do a series called interfacing linux so i feel a lot of audio questions from windows users yes interfacing linux i I can see that yep you're gonna show up and you're like so how do i get this work with you know uh pro tools or something that mac users do a shrug emoji i don't know so what i'm saying is yeah, don't don't send us to Pedro's boy. Think, think before you act. But yes, if you have a mm-hmm. question that you think is pertinent, or if you do want to let us know what we did right, what we did wrong, yeah, shout at us. <laughs> we dare you. So Pascal mm-hmm. writes in talking about clicks. Speaking of clicky keyboards, because Pedro got that sweet, sweet red yeah. switches that he didn't <laughs> like for some reason because he's a keyboard snob. <laughs> now. <laughs> Pascal's throw it out a nice little tip. It's like, you know, one of the cheapest mechanical keyboards you can buy used or some stock sells uh, is the Cherry Cherry G83000. Mm-hmm. Andy, yeah, also not red. And but yeah. A- Andy, yeah. <laughs> and- Andy, yeah. Andy, yeah. Andy, <laughs> yeah. No, that's Andy, yeah. Also not also red. Also not red. <laughs> but blue switches. <laughs> Yeah, I did have a look at the um, the actual Cherry keyboards, you know, the makers of, of the Cherry switches, uh, and they look very good, but that those blue switches, no, no, see, Nori has made it especially clear that she doesn't like the clickies on the keyboards, especially if it's not her keyboard, <laughs> if she's listening to, like, That's secondhand. That's because Nori's uh, an upstanding human being. She's an amazing <laughs> human being, which uh, probably explains me but uh yeah you know opposites attract and whatnot but (laughs) the um, yeah the 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 other keyboard it had red dyed switches with you know red plungers but they had the blue actuators painted them blue (laughs) i could have but i couldn't then use the keyboard because you could could put a it could annoy people (laughs) and get things thrown at my head like keyboard keyboard silencer (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I looked at them just like okay is there a way I can get away with not having to return this keyboard and I looked at the little low rings and the things that you pull out of the um, pull out the top of the switch so you can get at the actual actuator mm-hmm. and muffle it basically but that that would be a little too much work so Amazon give me my money back I immediately give it back to them so yeah alright alright mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Jill, you have like semi clicky keyboards, right? <laughs> yeah, in fact, uh, actually, I got this one out. This was one of the very first 68 key, um, um, clicky keyboards, uh, Magic Force, like from years ago. It was one of my very first mechanical keyboards, and yeah, it's got those. <laughs> yeah. The switches. I, so I don't I don't use it when we're broadcasting for obvious reasons. This is another one. <laughs> but of my I do love favorite it. Favorite questions I get. How do I get rid of my clickiness? Because people in the stream don't want to hear that. I'm like you think no one wants to hear that. Like, well, yes. No. no. Um that's cool. I grew up with clicky keyboards. I was glad when they stopped clicking. I'm like, yes, this is so much better. Aww. Admittedly, I like the twangy of the old proper mechanical keyboards with the uh, spring actuators. Mm-hmm. Clang, 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 so clang. cool. Yes. <laughs> clang, I love clang. the IBM Model M, too. I've got, got one right over there. That I, I, don't have, I don't want to have to bring in like noise canceling headphones to 
type. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the thing i wouldn't have personally minded the blue switches but um i don't live alone so yeah yeah <laughs> and Dekresny, he says i just like the physical feedback same here i love it for gaming i love these keyboards for gaming and typing but not not when we're broadcasting <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna have to talk about this plasma hate because Pedro Pedro <laughs> hates plasma and don't don't even get him started on like white blood cells. But hey, Aww. Michael writes it. <laughs> great show, but why all the hate on plasma? I use it and it works great. Yeah, Pedro. I thought you were what? you use KD, therefore you have to blindly defend it at all cost and at no time admit that it has any flaws. That is a proper way to <laughs> blindly back anything. That would be the proper way to be a Linux user, yes. Unfortunately, I stopped lying to myself about five years ago. So, yeah, it's uh, KD is great or... Should I say it could be great? Right now it's passable. Uh, K-Win compositing is still a veritable poop show. Uh, when it's not, say, you are playing a Proton game that uses Vulkan and inside the GLX context, and then you close said um, Vulkan context inside the GLX context, and uh, K-Win goes, oh, K-Win has crashed. Oh, it's for your good. Close the mm. game. Listen, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> you should have been running A. You should have been running Waylon. <laughs> well, that may be coming, but yeah, it's it's a known issue between KWin and the NVIDIA drivers. It's been long running. NVIDIA provided some patches to KWin's like, come on, just fix it already, guys. Just here. There you go. But the Linux development community is rightfully not terribly happy with NVIDIA. After all, you've all seen the poster that's behind Ven there and where that came from. So, yeah. <laughs> Listen, man, you saying NVIDIA is number one. I don't know what your problem is. <laughs> yes, yes. Number one. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's um it, that is the big issue if say you are using it on an amd system or an intel laptop that's great plasma works amazingly well with mesa mm -hmm. it's terrible on nvidia i have i've fought uh exor Conf let me, and let me, win to try and find a say, compromise. Say, I'm going to save an email for next week. Then why don't you just get an AMD card? Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> they're not in stock. <laughs> that that is an issue. Yes. No, I mean in the first place. <laughs> uh, because their price to performance wasn't great at the time. <laughs> why? Why do you and, hate freedom, uh, someone, Pedro? <laughs> You're what's wrong and, with uh, Linux. I bought the 970, and then you know the whole three and a half gig thing came out, <laughs> and uh, then Wimpy asked me to run some benchmarks for him, which I did, and I wasn't expecting him to agree. It's like you want to get me a 980, and he said, "Okay, okay, all right." <laughs> That's how Pedro ended up with a 980. Uh, yeah, 1080. <laughs> the 1080. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I've used Plasma on my RX 580 AMD GPU, and it runs pretty well. There are some issues, like Pedro was saying, so I don't use it when we're broadcasting, but it is improving a lot, and I love it. It's, you know, Plasma is one of the most beautiful Linux desktops out there, so. <laughs> don't remember the last time. Yeah, I, I was messing around with XWorks Sunday uh, for some indirect X stuff, and mm -hmm. yeah. I had to mess with it to get 144 hertz free sync on this monitor and 60 hertz oh, yeah. <laughs> on this one nice. because X doesn't like that. So I had to make it take it. <laughs> X will, in fact, give it to you. But we got to <laughs> get out of here, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, we will see you next week. But until then, um, enjoy some credits. That's a nice one. Thank you. But uh. I got to get the music going. Watch it. Hit that. Comes up. Thank you, Pascal and Michael, for oh. the awesome feedback. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Shout our way. We'll shout back at yours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yay, look at all of you that are here in chat. We've got Bentley Box Turtle. We've got Artharin. We've got Strider. We've got Computer Kid. We've got Inertia. We've got Mr. Alert. DeCresny. Daisy. Bones John came in a little late, but hello. Yeah. <laughs> David Ames. We've got, mm -hmm. gosh, lots of good people in chat right now. How do you know they're good? <laughs> a lot of them I, I know personally, <laughs> but some of them I don't. But they're Linux user users, and that makes them special. <laughs> then again, this is the internet. Assumptions will. Hello. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>